to the disc golf doctor. Today we're going to talk about the thoracic spine and its relation to disc golf. It's something that's critical to gain proper motion in. If you do not have good motion in your thoracic spine, we see that contribute to lumbar issues, that's lower back issues, definitely contributes to shoulder issues, uh, and obviously contributes to pain within the thoracic spine at times. But it's one of the things that, that's the crux between quite a few different things. Even we see it be a big issue in, in neck issues as well. So if you have any of those things, this is a really important thing to work on. Even if you don't, it's a very good thing to work on preventatively because very few people have great motion within their thoracic spines. Usually when we're sitting for long periods of time, we end up in these slump forward positions and our thoracic spine ends up rounding. Uh, and not used to being in a full extended position. That really puts an added strain and stress on the lumbar spine, the neck, and the shoulder and puts them in positions that predispose them to developing issues over time chronically and uh, to be aggravated in an acute incident as well. So what I want to go over now is, is some basic biomechanics within the particularly the thoracic spine, a little bit with how it relates to the lumbar spine We'll talk a tiny bit about some of the mechanics in the shoulder because that'll relate to future exercises down the road. And we'll go over some exercises, particularly to stretch the, the get, get better extension within the thoracic spine and stretch some of the muscles in that area. So important things to know for disc golf is a distinction between the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine. The thoracic spine starts at right at the base of the neck and runs all the way down to T12. The lumbar spine starts at L1 and runs all the way down to L5 where it connects with the sacrum. So thoracic spine from here to about here, and then the lumbar spine from here down to here. The reason we're going to make that distinction is when we're talking about stretching and rotation, it's good to get the motion in one area and not the other. When we do any movements, we really don't want to get the movement in our lumbar spine. We want to be getting movement in our hips and our thoracic spine. What you can tell about the spine in the thoracic region is, if you can see, the joints here in the thoracic spine are oriented like this, meaning that when they rotate well. You can see it rotates smoothly. Those joints are designed to rotate. If we look at the lumbar spine, those joints are in this plane, not in this plane, meaning that they don't rotate well. As soon as you start to rotate, you start getting compression in the lumbar spine. You can see those joints just compress together rather than rotate. Lumbar spine flexes in, uh, pretty well, extends okay. Um, not that we want to go into extension, but it does not rotate. And so one thing we want to encourage in the thoracic spine is rotation. One of the reasons we want to improve extension through this area of your back as well is that the, the thoracic spine should be more extended. It, it's okay to have a slight curve, but we want to, in general, have good extension because if you get too much extension in the lumbar spine, you start adding compression of those joints. You narrow the opening where these nerves come out. So particularly if you have any degenerative changes, uh, whether it's decrease in disc height or any arthritis in the lower back, Extension is a really bad direction. That's going this way, adds compression in those joints in the lumbar spine, narrowing of the foramen where the nerve comes out. So if we can improve rotation and extension of the thoracic spine, it takes a large load off of the lumbar spine and allows us more movement to really develop the power of our throat. I'm gonna try not to go into too much detail. We could talk about a million things with this picture. What's pertinent is we see a lot of people with what you would term shoulder impingement or rotator cuff tendinopathy. All it really means is there's some damage to the tendon, one of the rotator cuffs. Particularly the supraspinatus is the most pertinent in this case. That's the, the tendon that that arrow is pointing to where it's hanging inflamed tendon. Uh, we're not going to get into to the point there's not such a thing as a tendonitis. That would be a whole different discussion. But what's pertinent here is when you don't have strong enough rotator cuff muscles, that humor, the head of the humerus, that ball there, will migrate superiorly. It'll glide upwardly, particularly as you're bringing the arm closer overhead. Um, really dynamic movements, the rotator cuff won't hold the head of the humerus right within that socket. You can see the glenoid, the socket of the joint is really small 
It doesn't take a lot for it to get out of place. Particularly when you're in a flex position in the thoracic spine, it becomes very common that the opening where the tendon comes through narrows and we, you end up having a lot of issues with impingement and other issues like labral tears in the shoulder. And there's a lot more we could talk about, but that's what's important for the thoracic spine is that if we can get better thoracic extension, we are not putting the tendon and the joint at increased risk for injury, particularly with such a dynamic motion as we see in disc golf. We have a couple exercises we're going to go over now that encourage thoracic extension and thoracic rotation. We're so often limited um, by being in these flexed positions in the thoracic spine, and that's going to obviously limit extension, and it's inherently going to limit rotation. So we're stretching the, some of the structures around the spine, um, particularly certain muscles like the long thoracic muscles that, that span quite a few segments. Uh, for example, lat latissimus dorsi, which will run from the, the shoulder all the way down to about T12. It's a really long muscle and will hold us in these flex positions if it's really tight. So stretching that out is going to help with extension and allow us to get more movement in our thoracic spine as a whole. This is the first exercise. It's a kneeling long thoracic stretch or some people call it a prayer stretch where I'm bringing my hips back down towards my heels. My elbows are on a surface with my forearms straight up in the air. In an ideal world I would have a firmer surface so my elbows couldn't press down in as much as you can see there. Um, but I'm trying to breathe and as I exhale let my thoracic spine, my chest, drop down towards the floor as I ease into that stretch. And the big mistake people make is oftentimes having their knees too far away from where their elbows are just like I do there and you can see my lumbar spine extend. It's not a good position. If my knees are too close I'm not going to be able to extend all the way and I have some flexion or rounding in my lumbar spine. You want to find a happy medium in between the two positions. Uh, next stretch, and al another alternative for a long thoracic stretch. The nice thing about this is you can really control things. It's not the most convenient stretch since you have to be on your back. Um, but having the knees bent up to protect the lumbar spine, I'm bringing my arms up overhead. Again, in, in an ideal world, I would ha I'd be in a surface where I could bring my arms um, past uh, parallel with the ground, like on a bed with my arms hanging off the, the edge. I can bring my arms closer to my head like you see there, or more of in a wide position, or externally ro rotated. I'm really trying to maintain a, a chin tuck. I'm tucking my chin down towards my chest and pushing my head down into the table as well. Here's a third version of a thoracic extension stretch. I can do it standing. It's quite a good one when done correctly. I have my knees slightly bent. I'm holding on to something with my arms about shoulder or head height. I'm allowing my chest to come down. I want to make sure my feet aren't too far away, just like the other stretches. That's going to allow some lumbar extension, some arching my lower back, and that's not what we want. We want to, again, make sure the knees are bent, bringing the chest down. I don't want my head to drop down like I'm demonstrating there. That's the big mistake people make. You want to do a chin tuck, chin down towards your chest, head up towards the sky. And you can vary your arm positions. You can go wider like, like that. You can go a little more narrow, closer to the head, whatever allows you to get the best stretch as long as you're not having pain. Here's an example of a stretch that works on thoracic rotation. Critical that you have your knees bent up towards your chest uh, to protect your lumbar spine. You can put your arms in two positions. You can either have it bent like I have there, and you'll see in a moment I'll try straightening out my arm. Some people um, can tolerate having the arm all the way out. Some people that's too much of a lever arm and puts uh, an unusual amount of stress on their shoulder and they can't tolerate it. But this would be the ideal position if you can. Uh, what would be nice is if you did it on the side of a bed with your arm hanging off so that if you could go beyond parallel with the ground, it would allow you to accentuate that stretch. Again, keep the knees up towards your chest. Try to relax, let gravity do the work, and let, you, let it rotate you. Just like the other exercises, breathe. And as you exhale, allow a little bit more motion each time. You want to do this on both sides. Particularly the right side would be most pertinent if you're a right-handed thrower but bilaterally it makes sense to be able to open up the chest and, and gain thoracic mobility as a whole. Don't worry about trying to do all of those stretches. Find what works for you. Particularly those first three exercises, they would be redundant to do all of them. Uh, there's pros and cons to each of them. That first exercise with kneeling is really good because you can um, perfect the, the position and mechanics very easily. The second one we did in, uh, in supine and lying down with the knees bent up is also very good. It's, it's hard to mess up, but it's also inconvenient if you don't have a place to lay down and put your feet up on. 
I think the last of the three that we went over is, is a very practical one because as long as you can find something to put your hands up on, you can do it just about anywhere. You don't need an uh, unusual set of, of uh, circumstances or, or setup uh, to, to do as long as you, and you could use anything. You could be holding on to the wall. You could hold on to railings. You could hold on to the fridge. You could bend the knees more and hold on to your counter. Lots of different variations. As long as you maintain the basic ideas of keeping the knees bent, not letting the lumbar spine arch into a concavity from on the top and allow the thoracic spine to extend. Also making sure not to let your head come forward, but to keep your chin tucked down and, and head back throughout the stretch. You'll find that that really accentuates the stretch and protects your neck at the same time. The rotation one, I think, makes a lot of sense to do in addition to that. So ultimately, you have two exercises there to work on, whichever works best for you. Thanks for joining us for the Disc Golf Doctor. Please leave some feedback, some thoughts, some ideas for future discussion so that we can continue to learn more together on the, this great sport of disc golf. Please subscribe and uh, look forward to talking to you guys in the future.